What's up guys, Dr. Greg here back with another episode of Races Explained. I know I've been gone for a little while, but I hope you guys have all been doing well. I recently just started up at a new office and it's been absolutely crazy, so I, that's why I haven't been around and able to respond to your guys' comments, but hopefully I can get back into the swing of things and making these videos for you guys. So, what I want to talk about today is something that I've actually gotten a lot of questions about from my current patients, and it was an idea that I had for a video for quite some time, but what I'm going to talk about in today's video is the question of what is IPR, also known as interproximal reduction. So let's go. So IPR goes by a bunch of different names based off of the orthodox and how they describe it, but ultimately the process is the same. There's different names for it, such as interproximal reduction, IPR, some call it stripping of the teeth, polishing between the teeth. They're all the same thing, and that is to take away tooth structure on both sides or one side of a tooth. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about tooth anatomy. So this is what a tooth looks like. On the outermost layer, we have the protective layer, which is called the enamel. Little fun fact, enamel is actually the strongest structure in your body. It's stronger than any bone. And what this is, is it coats the outer surface of every single tooth in your mouth. Just inside of the enamel is a layer called the dentin. The dentin is a little bit softer than enamel, but it's still really strong. It's about as strong as the bones in your body. And when the dentin is exposed, you get some sensitivity. Inside of the dentin, we have the final layer, and that's called the pulp. So the pulp is usually the area where you get a root canal treatment. That's the area of the tooth that gets treated when you have a root canal. When we do interproximal reduction, our goal is just to thin the enamel ever so slightly. We don't want to take away all the enamel, but we're able to take away just a little bit to achieve the goals that I'm going to talk about later on in this video. As you can imagine though, if you do too much IPR, it's not good for your teeth. So you want to minimize the amount that you do, but some IPR is more than okay. Your orthodontist can evaluate how much IPR can be done in your case because everybody's different. Some people have more enamel, whereas some people have less enamel. So it's really, really case dependent. Also another interesting thing is if you ever looked at a tooth, you'll notice that it looks kind of like a fan. They're wider on the top than they are towards the bottom. So when we do this interproximal reduction, we aim to take it away just at the top because when you have two fans that are just touching each other like this and you take a little bit away between both the teeth, you have a lot of space to work with because it's kind of a triangular shape and you can move them closer together. So I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, how does your orthodontist do this IPR and why does your orthodontist do it? So first let's talk about how we do it. There's a bunch of different ways by which we can do it. Some of us use a disc, which is like a spinning wheel that basically just polishes on both sides and it goes between your teeth and makes them ever so slightly slimmer. And when I say ever so slightly, I'm talking about like 0.1 millimeters. It's really, really minor. Some orthodontists will use a little strip that goes between your teeth and it's almost like a floss that is a little bit rough and it sands both sides so that it can polish the tooth like that. And some orthodontists and dentists like to use a burr or a drill where they can go between the teeth and use that. The goal of this is all the same, and the way we do it is dependent on your orthodontist preference and what they're most comfortable with in order to give you the most ideal result. I always warn my patients that sometimes you may get a little bit of sensitivity when we do this, but almost every single time it goes away, and it's really rare that you even will get sensitivity. So now the most sought after question probably in this video is, why do we do it? So the reason that we do IPR is usually when we need to make some space. Now I've talked about in a previous video, and I'll link out over here, um, reasons why orthodontists extract teeth. So like I said in that video, most of the time the orthodontist will extract teeth because we need space. When you extract a tooth, you gain a lot of space, but what if you don't need that much space, but you still need some? Well, one of the ways you can make space is by doing what we're talking about in today's video, and that's polishing between the teeth to make them a little bit smaller so that we have a little more room to work with in the mouth. This is really common in a liner treatment, so if you're going through like Invisalign, let's say, interproximal reduction is pretty common just to make space between the teeth and free them up so that they can align more easily. Another common reason why we would do IPR is let's say we line up the teeth and we see that they're just sticking out a little bit too much. Now, if you stick it out too much, that's called a perfusion, like we talked about in our extraction video. And in that case, we would have to extract teeth to bring your, your front teeth more backwards. But let's just say it's a little bit. In that case, interproximal reduction can be done on one or both arches, 
in order to make room and upright your teeth to a more stable position. Another reason why we do IPR is a common reason. So there's a ratio that your orthodontist uses and it's to calculate the size of your upper teeth in relationship to your lower teeth. And if this ratio fits perfectly, that means that your upper and lower teeth will fit together nicely with a proper overjet and overbite. Now, a lot of the times, the upper lateral incisors, these teeth right next to your front ones, are a little bit smaller than what they're supposed to be. Meaning that your upper teeth, altogether, are ever so slightly smaller in this ratio than your lower teeth. So what will happen is, you'll have your nice bite in the back, but your teeth will hit a little bit like, um, almost like edge to edge. And when we have a case like that, if you can imagine if the teeth are hitting like this, we want to file through these lower ones, make them a little bit smaller, so that we can bring them back, so that you can have an appropriate overbite and overjet. Not too much, but just the right amount. Another reason why we do interpoxmal reduction, especially in the older population with recession, is because of a reason that I referred to earlier. So if you have some bone loss, what happens is, is that the gums begin to recede. And like I mentioned earlier in this video, teeth are shaped like fans. So originally when you were younger, there was gum between all of your teeth. But as you age and if you're not flossing properly, you'll have some bone loss, which causes the gum levels to go down. This exposes the fact that your teeth are shaped like fans. Now, if you have two fans that are touching each other with normal gum in the tissue, it looks healthy. But if you start having bone loss and the gum level goes down, what you start to see is a black triangle. A black triangle is formed when you start having bone loss, so your gum levels go down, yet your teeth stay in the same position with their fan shape. So interproximal reduction can be used in a case like this to remove just the top of the fan and make it a little more rectangular so that when we bring those teeth closer together, we don't have as big of a black triangle and it's less noticeable. So that's another indication where interproximal reduction can be used. So these are just some of the reasons why we do interproximal reduction. It would be impossible for me to go through every single reason why your orthodontist would do interproximal reduction simply because there are so many. If you've ever had interproximal reduction before, let us know in the comments as to maybe why you had that or if you don't know why, just let me know. If you have any questions about this procedure, please let me know in the comments. And like I said, I've been pretty bad about this recently, but I'm definitely going to try to get better at responding to your comments because I really do enjoy getting your guys' feedback. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if this is your first time on the channel. Also, be sure to follow me at Dr. Greg Ortho on Instagram so you can stay up to date and I am planning to post more there. Like I said, it's been super busy, but I will get better, I promise. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I will catch you guys next time on Braces Explained. For now, Dr. Greg, 